So as a child, I had a thing for running into doorknobs and table edges and pretty much anything remotely at my four-year-old eye level with the potential to do some damage. And then I'd walk to my mom, rocking my newest panda eye just to hear her mutter, thank God that boy's got a spare. Now bear with me, up until a few years ago, that was why I thought we have two eyes, one's a spare. But having experienced clear and consistent binocular vision for the better half of two decades, I began to see that maybe, just maybe, there could be a more meaningful reason. Now, have you ever wondered why we have two eyes? Well, to logically answer this question, we have to look at everything that we're missing when we take away vision in one eye. And when we do that, children have shown to demonstrate hindered reading and comprehension, postural instability, and delayed motor learning, all of which are detrimental to a child's ability to develop and learn new skills. Now, adults are no exception. Coordination, perception, and the ability to recognize shapes and objects are all affected. Okay, so having two eyes allow our flawless navigation through space, our clever acquisition of new skills, and unparalleled ability to pick up a medium double-double from Timmy's. Okay, but the story doesn't end happily there. Over 30% of university students have been tested to have some sort of binocular dysfunction. And that stat has only shown to increase with an older population, and if people like me were included in the study. Now, being diagnosed doesn't mean you'll be clumsy and uncoordinated forever. It just means that maybe you won't be able to enjoy the next 3D Star Wars movie as much, or maybe once in a while miss a volleyball. Not a big deal, right? Well, if you replace Star Wars with keyhole surgery, and the volleyball with an emergency stop button at a production plant, then the consequences can become fatal. Now my research looks to identify features of an object that are best perceived under normal and disrupted binocular vision. And to do this, I will show the participants a series of objects that are very similar to each other and ask them if the one that they're currently seeing is the same as the one they previously just saw. Now, this would allow me to close in on exactly which features are best identified. And if some features are identified, then I will test the movement of the participants to see if it is indeed smoother and more accurate. My findings can have major implications on the design of thousands of commonly used tools, objects, and workstations. And tomorrow, I hope to integrate these findings into a large part of your everyday routines and mine, cough, cough, phone, and coffee. And that way, we can enhance the way we interact with the world around us.